Hello everyone, welcome to the third week. Is this the third? Well, this is the third vlog. I don't know if it's the third week, you know? I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything because I feel like I was tired and then I'm not tired because we are currently doing black Halloween sprints on Monet's channel and I was drinking a Red Bull because I had a migraine and usually for me the caffeine plus acetaminophen usually knocks it right out and so I did the combination and now I'm kind of like I think my body feels physically tired kind of but then I feel wired at the same I don't know it's just a weird experience but hello welcome I uploaded the second vlog and that was a 55 minute vlog it took you think about this it took ooh, it took seven hours for the footage to render i started uploading it at maybe 9 30 10 o'clock this morning and it did not fit it took it like seven or eight hours to upload and a lot of that has to do with the fact too that um, my iPhone, which I am capturing some footage on, is recording in 4K. So that's a whole different thing. And then YouTube is picking up that it's 4K. And so now I realize that whenever I do these vlogs, they're just gonna go up at eight o'clock on Tuesdays because my poor little system can't handle the business. So what are the plans for this week? Typically, I've started each one of these vlogs off with a roll, but because I didn't finish anything <laughs> from last week, I am not starting this one off with a roll. I am starting this one off with a, I need to finish some stuff seriously this week. Uh, I am doing a mix of things that I'm reading for Black Queen, as well as things that I am just reading in general, just so it just makes sense like timeline wise I don't know I guess I'm just documenting every single day and I'm like it would be weird for me not to talk about but whatever you get what I'm saying here um priority though are things for black Halloween because I am super behind I am super behind but last night I did patron sprints and I got to page 212 chapter 15 of root magic i think i talked about it in my last vlog the goal is to finish root magic this week and i don't have much left i literally yeah i have a little over 100 pages left i'm gonna finish it this is gonna be a thing that's gonna get done clearly this is gonna be a thing that gets done okay so root magic and bitter root are the two that i am anticipating attempting to finish between this week not between anything just this week i do plan to finish it and bitter root and hopefully if i can find what i'm looking for yes i can i was supposed to start this last week i didn't finish it last week because you know life was lifing life was lifing and i need to also finish the dark 30 because so many people are reading it and they're really really enjoying it and I'm excited that so many people are enjoying The Dark Thirty because it just makes me feel good that this is one of those, I don't want to say lesser known because in in the like library literature, like I fam literature, black literature, children's lit, all of the above, this is a very well known book. And so I'm happy to have brought this book to the table and so many people are enjoying it that makes me very very happy because Patricia McKissick is an OG and as well as uh, Brian Pickney OG 
creators in this and so that makes me extremely happy um what have i have i read anything yes so i have finished one thing since the last time that i updated i was working on separate from my black wing content i have been working my or had been working my way through divine rivals and i finished it and it was really good you know book talk got that one right i typically kind of steer away from book talk recommendations and that's not trying to crap on book talk or anything like that it's just that i mentally have this thing about hype books if you know me you've been here long enough you know that it's not that i feel like i'm above it or anything like that i think for me it's just this psychological thing of like i'm so fearful that i'm going to be that one person that doesn't like the stuff and i don't understand what everyone else understands about you know the goodness of this book and typically that's where i fall think about fourth wing i didn't like that um, <laughs> So, and so many people I know, like, really, really love Fourth Wing. So I was thinking the same thing about Divine Rare. I was like, oh, I'm not going to like this. But y'all, it was really, really good. It was a very, very good book. And not just in terms of the character development in it, because I feel like a great portion of it is character study. I wanted to give it five stars, but I'm explaining why I didn't give it five stars. But it is a solid 4.5 for me. The writing is poetic. It was smooth as silk. I just, you know, I come across some writers where they could write a grocery list and their writing is just so beautiful. And I know that that's just like a huge thing that people say, like, I read their grocery list, but no. Um, Rebecca Ross is talented, very poetic. I was very invested in, in the romance between the two characters. And like so many people have said before me, <coughs> that have reviewed it the romance between them happens very very quick it's it's like it paces well and then all of a sudden we or we they're into it like it it happens very quickly but it felt so real there was such a unique connection between the two of them their life experiences were so tragic but i think that they kind of guided each other through these life experiences that made the book itself even more rewarding and just the letters the letters were really itch off the letters that they wrote to each other were just beautiful and it gave this feeling of like just true and pure romance between these two humans that found each other in such a dark time because we have this war going on that is very reminiscent of like a world war one era so i think the history major in me really really attached to that moment this world war one type of feel to it <clears throat> and it's the it's gods and goddesses that are battling each other that have humans as their military and so the fact that these two found each other in such a dark and depressing time and were able to flourish in their romance is what made this such a wonderful experience. And the fact that, uh, you know, we just, just, oh my gosh, y'all, I don't even have the words because it was just those moments. It, it definitely is a character study. So if you're looking for something that is, and I'm not saying that there's no action in it because this does take place during a war. There are some graphic scenes in terms of battle. There are some tough moments where we're dealing with um, alcoholism of one parent. There's death in it. There is graphic, like, injuries related to the war that's part of it so it's not that it's not without its plot driven moments but this definitely leans into character development or character study where we are getting a a 360 perspective of these characters and from beginning to end they're constantly evolving constantly growing with each other and i appreciated that the ending of this book was because I had thoughts about what was happening at the end of this book and then it was like wait hold on I don't I, I was wrong <laughs> needless to say I was wrong and then there was kind of an not an epilogue but it was a shift in perspective because we have both of their perspectives and there's a, another perspective that gets thrown in at the very end and I was like 
oh my gosh so i am anticipating the release of the second book which is coming out in december the reason why i couldn't give it a complete five stars is because the world building was not strong this is a fantasy romance but the fantastical elements in terms of the actual world itself is where i had a problem so we don't really know much i mean we get some information about these these gods and goddesses but it's very shallow and i'm hoping that in the second book she dives just a little bit more beneath the surface into who these gods and goddesses are and why are they specifically using humans in the way that they're using humans i'm trying to be very careful of my words here and i think because there's that ending brought forth a lot of questions for me and in an interesting way and it made me want her to just dig a little bit deeper when it came to the world itself but if you are looking for a book that does great character study and the writing is exceptional it's poetic it's beautiful and you know in a lot of ways it takes a lot for a book to make me cry so a lot of people are very emotional about this book and i was too but it wasn't to the point where i was like oh i feel devastated you know this one hit me right in the gut. it wasn't that but i definitely think that if you like those sorts of books then this is definitely one that you're going to want to pick up so definitely four and a half stars um very 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 well written very well written and i, I definitely makes me want to check out rebecca ross's um, other books. Now, I also ended up starting um, Jada's book, uh, Worthy. And I'm only an hour, uh, maybe an hour and some change um, into it. It's, there's a lot going on right now with Jada. People are feeling a lot of ways towards Jada right now. And I read Will Smith's book when it initially came out i gave it five stars it was a very very good autobiography i'm very curious to see how i'm going to feel about jada's and with me you know my reviews of biography or autobiography specifically are never about judging someone's story because that's not my place um, and I would never do that. It's always about the writing style, the cohesiveness, um, authorial tone, all of that. That plays a big role into how I feel about it. But it's, you know, uh, I'm sure it's going to be messy in the sense that they are giving us a lot of access to their personal life. And if they feel comfortable sharing, that's on them. But I know a lot of people feel like it's becoming a point where it's oversharing but I also am very interested in trying to understand like why people are like so against Jada I I don't follow her enough I've never followed her enough to really I don't want to say not to care I really not to care <laughs> like I mean I haven't um but I am reading it because I want to see kind of the comparisons that in terms of perspective of their relationship from him and from her i don't really keep it with him in the news so it's you know sometimes it's kind of hard to avoid but for the most part i don't keep up with him all right i'm also trying to i just did a my patron vlog i'm uploading that right now as well so there's that and um yeah that's that's pretty much it that's the opening clip for this one y'all i am going to we have about 28 minutes left on the sprint i'm gonna go ahead and for the last little bit of this sprint, i'm gonna go ahead and listen to more of root magic and blend read while i do that and then it'll be time for me to get ready for bed because i have to go to work back to work in the morning I was off today because my child has been sick um but i need to go back in tomorrow i can't not i don't want to not go back in tomorrow and so we're she's gonna be fine tomorrow in terms of arrangements and stuff like that she'll be fine um but i need to go back into the office tomorrow so 
that means getting up early all that fun jazz yeah mm -hmm. we love to see it no we don't no we don't no we don't now i am actually feeling tired all right now i'm rambling that's it i'm done i will check my hey y'all so i wanted to do a quick check-in before i got too bogged down in things that i had been doing and finishing and stuff because I realized that I've been finishing some stuff and I haven't done an update and I don't want to get so bogged down that I'm not, you know, I'm not keeping up with what I'm finishing. So the first thing I ended up finishing is uh, Derek Barnes, Santa's Gotta Go. It's a picture book and I'm a huge fan of um, Derek Barnes. Derek Barnes wrote the picture book uh, Crown Ode to Fresh Cut, which you haven't read that. Um, King the King of Kindergarten, Queen of Kindergarten, if you haven't read any of those books, like they're amazing. He's an, an amazing creator. He also has one, I forget the name of it, but it's like comic book style, um, something, something lava. I can't remember it off the top of my head, which is bad. I'm a whole librarian. <laughs> I'm a whole librarian and I could not, I can't remember. I think it's like, like lava in my veins or something like that. But he's just, uh, he's just a great creator and so he came out with this Christmas picture book where it's this black family and they're like oh you know we heard that Santa sometimes like stays with families and we think it'll be really cool if like Santa came and stayed with us and so Santa inevitably does come and stay with them and then they find out like Santa actually is not the person that you want to stay at your house and it's Santa's pretty cool like Santa's got tattoos, he's got his ears pierced, he's pretty like, he's he's pretty badass. Like I, I was digging the vibes with the Santa Claus. But the family is not having it. The family is irritated, they're over it. They're, they're just like, uh, absolutely not. Like this is just getting a, a tad bit ridiculous. And so it's a really good picture book that talks about like the, the spirit of like caring and giving and um, really like having patience and so the artwork was great I love the representation of the black family in this down to like just hair their future features like it was just perfect it was just a good combination so I get it one five stars perfect for the holiday season if you like reading uh picture books during holiday seasons if you have little ones with your caregiver or just you have little ones in your life or whatever the case may be um after that I did decide to go ahead and push through and finish their vicious games and I don't want to say push through because that book was good <laughs> by Joelle um it was good it is definitely more like on the satire side of things to be quite honest with you it's definitely a satire the author has exclusively said it like this is a satire but it focuses on a girl who a, a initially had um she had what did she have she had been admitted to an Ivy League. Now, I can't remember if it was Yale or Princeton. I feel like it was Yale. And I literally just finished this book. I should know this. But she got accepted to an Ivy League school and her acceptance was rescinded because she got into an altercation at school. So there is this wealthy white family and they have this event where the group of women are invited to get the opportunity to get access to the familial resources. You know, that's, we're talking monetary, you know, upper echelon networking type of situation. And so she felt like with the invitation that she participated, she would be able to get her acceptance back. She'd, she'd be able to go back to school. But it's a lot darker than what she anticipates, y'all. When I tell you it is darkity dark, 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 I literally mean that it is on a different level of dark than what she thought. I think she thought it was play play, but like this is literally a life or death situation. And she quickly realizes that it's a life or death situation. And she's competing against these other girls and it gets really, really brutal. And it is definitely, as the quote is, eat the rich. It definitely ends perfectly. It discusses so many different topics about 
wealth, um, wealth and how it works against so many different groups of people. We are looking at, um, I don't want to say fake activism or fake support of marginalized communities, but really <laughs> it is that performative. It is the performative activism of people who claim they support marginalized communities when all in all they really do not. It speaks to the treatment of women and how this game really has, it's intended to break women down and they are being used for the appeasement of the men in this family. It is quite sick, but it is very well written, very fast paced, very intriguing. And definitely I would have to say, it wasn't quite a five star read for me, but I will say anywhere between a four and a four and a half. So I technically already this week have been having a great reading week because we have, um, Divine Rivals, which I gave four and a half stars. We have the Derek Barnes book, which I gave five stars. This book, which I'm giving about a four, four and a half. So it's been a very pleasant, enjoyable reading experience this week. I only have a little bit left. I have under a hundred pages left. I don't even think I have that many pages left, honestly. I really don't. I may have like 50, 60 pages left of Bitterroot. I read a little bit more of that today. So I plan on finishing that tonight. I'm hoping to finish that tonight and to also finish, um, not Bitterroot. I'm talking about Root Magic. I only have about 50, 60 pages. And then I'm also hoping to finish Bitterroot tonight so that I can do another roll, y'all. I need to do another roll. Another roll needs to happen so I can go ahead and finish my Blackwing TBR this month. I mean, this week. So I'm hoping that that will be a thing. And then let's see, I'm still listening to Jada's book. I am, I think maybe three or four hours into Jada's book and I'm still kind of in the early phases of her life. I am at the section where she initially meets Tupac, which I, I'm very interested in the dynamic of their friendship. I know they were very, very, very close friends. Um, Jada, if you did not know that, Jada and Tupac were very, very close. I am really delving into this, trying to get a better understanding of Jada and then also Jada as a person and how that works in correlation with Will. And they have a very complex relationship and a relationship that I think most of us don't always understand. Um, but I know that Jada is getting a lot of like hatred right now for this book and I'm not sure why. Because, you know, Will got the opportunity to tell his side of, of the story and express himself. And I think it's just kind of unfair that maybe people are not necessarily giving Jada the same opportunity to, to voice her side. And people are like, oh, well, Will already wrote his book. And it's like, okay, but so what? That was Will's book from Will's perspective, how he felt, what he thought. And now it's Jada's turn. And I don't 100% think that people are necessarily giving her... Um, a fair chance. So I, I didn't know how rough Jada grew up. Like I didn't know that she had parents who were um, addicts. Um, her mother was a heroin addict. I did not know that. I also did not know that Jada was a drug dealer um, at one point when she was a teenager. She was a drug dealer. But growing up where she grew up in Baltimore, she grew up in a very, very rough area and um, it was a means of survival. The, the relationship for her between her and Tupac is, is very brother and sister and I think people are like oh well you know she called Tupac her soulmate and I, I think people fail to realize sometimes that you know you can have a soulmate that is not an intimate or romantic partner you know you can have someone who literally you feel like is the second part of you um, is you know a person that is supposed to be a part of your life. I, I knew that they were very close. I did not know that they actually had a tumultuous relationship um, where they would go, you know, points where they just wouldn't speak to each other. And I actually did not know that she had not been speaking to Tupac at the time of his death, um, which is heartbreaking because I can't imagine loving someone so deeply. And I can't imagine the pain that she lives with knowing that, you know, Tupac died and they weren't on speaking terms.
you know, and that's your soulmate. That's someone that you love endlessly. That, you know, that's that's that love that you're not necessarily going to find with, with just any person. And I know Will had spoke about it in his book that he was very jealous of Tupac, but there was never a romantic relationship between Tupac and Jada. They were very, very close friends. And I'm, I'm very... I have strong feelings about friendships and the connectedness that you feel with someone um, when you have a friend that just it feels like the two of your souls are supposed to be together they are they are matches and so I he already explicitly stated that he was jealous of their relationship and I think people are looking at Jada like oh you know you're married to Will but you keep talking about Tupac you have to understand like that was her soulmate that was her best friend that was her everything that she grew up with that she you know she looked after they looked after each other and growing up in such a rough environment and people don't necessarily understand that and so I can understand why she would feel so deeply why she is so heartbroken about his death and and I don't know if that's something that you ever truly heal from I've never experienced that so I don't know if that's something that you ever truly get over if that grief is any like I don't think you I mean I personally don't think that that's something that you would ever just come to terms with so I don't know but I am on my way to pick up my, my munchkin and we're gonna go home have dinner I have a couple of videos that I need to film tonight I had a video go up on this channel today about what's been going on with Scholastic crap show crap show and I want to film a video for the comic channel and I want to do one more video on this channel on Saturday so we'll see if I feel up to it I may not feel like it <laughs> I may be like uh-uh I'm not doing it I don't feel like it so we'll see what happens all right y'all doing a check-in because I have not done any type of check-in today I think when I checked in with y'all yesterday did I check in with y'all yesterday yeah I think I checked in with y'all at some point yesterday um and I talked a little bit about what I had been oh I think I talked about the fact that I had finished child I don't know what I, <laughs> I am tired okay so maybe I should say um it's been a busy day I worked today and then uh we had a pride parade today and so I actually ended up walking in the pride parade and so I I'm tired 
I am extremely tired and I wasn't expecting to be as tired as I am. Okay, so I did, I think I talked about finishing their Vicious Games, which is what I talked about. I had also talked about the fact that I was continuing my read with Root Magic, which I did end up finishing today. This was definitely somewhere in between four, four and a half. I haven't decided yet, but it was good. It was very, how did I describe this? I had three lights go out. How did I have three lights go out? There's not, I just replaced one of those. Okay, I need to replace those. I, complete distraction. I've ended up finishing Root Magic. It was good. I did enjoy it. It, like I said, in between four, four and a half stars. Great, great, great insight to the Gullah Geechee Nation. It definitely talks a lot about, I think the author's note was really great because it talks about being in between two worlds like growing up in a family where roots practicing root is you know it's normalized and then having to kind of step into the outside world where people don't understand it and the author did grow up having that sort of experience so i really appreciate that the ending was sad <laughs> it wasn't like i didn't cry but it was sad in the sense that it was very true to the time period which this took place in the 60s so the horror of this book is not just by the the creatures that we see like haints and boo hags there's also i think this paralleling horror of what it's like to be black living in the south during the 60s and what you inevitably experience and what those in power can do to you with little to no reprimand and to be honest with you, you know, although I think justice is found in this book, it really illustrates that the fact that there were a lot of families that did not receive the justice that they do in some way. And even in receiving that justice, it doesn't take away the pain that you experience. And so I am heartbroken for this family and the author did state that the experiences that she wrote from this book she did take from two people in her life that were close to her one who practiced and one who very much so was against the practice of root magic and how um Eden had to grow up in between those two worlds and just the fact that I you know going back to what I said in my last vlog when I was talking about reading Black AF History, which I'm going to talk about in a little while because I did read a little bit of that last night too and I wanted to provide a little bit of an update with that. But, you know, people always say, and this is, book is another good example, oh, you know, slavery was 200, 300 years ago. Like, why do you keep holding on to slavery? Why is that something that you feel like you must continue to talk about? And it's like, well because from slavery you have you know reconstruction you have Jim Crow and it's left a lasting legacy and it's not something that you just forget when literally their generation still alive that experienced this we are not that far removed and people like to pretend that we're far removed or we're past that are we because like I always say like I had a dad that grew up during this period okay um it is not far removed from my family whatsoever. The the overt racism, the things that white people could get away with in doing to black families and killing them and there being no justice served to this day. And I don't think people understand the impact, the terror, the trauma, the PTSD that those people live with as a result and that trauma that's then passed on to me my generation that I have to be mindful to try not to pass on that trauma to my child things like this create generational trauma okay it's a legacy that we inevitably pass on from one to another and to expect or to have this um, expectation I should say that all of this should just be forgotten that we shouldn't really worry about it because this is a thing of the past. 
it's very it's ignorant and of course if you don't have to deal with things like this of course it's easy to say just forget about it it's nothing but I think that Eden Royce did a very good job tackling that those paralleling themes of horror is is very interesting because I don't think I was expecting that that we get this you know you know we get the paranormal things that I was experiencing but there's this other fear that the twins deal with and it's very much so I think brought to the forefront at the end of the book where there's a moment because we kind of wrapped up one section and I was like okay I still had a good portion of the book left. I'm like why do I have a good portion of the book left when you know I'm thinking in my head like we kind of wrapped that up but then it showed that there was another element of fear and danger to consider and while we were consumed by you know the danger that comes with having an understanding and practice and roots there's also this very much so in your face societal fear that you also have to battle so it's two things you know that these twins are dealing with and it's it was a good book um definitely worth reading i'm very interested in checking out eden royce's new book i will be picking that up i don't know if i'm going to listen to that on, on um on audio or read it physically i haven't decided yet so i also did read a little bit more of black af history i got to the section where he's talking a little bit about um the role of the black church in black history and i disagreed with, ironically <laughs> there were some aspects of it that i disagreed with him not saying that um the black church doesn't play its role i do think that he did a very good job or well-researched job of illustrating how i think the way that um some people perceive the black church and christianity in terms of black people is very much not a legacy solely from white people because it is a conglomeration of um of islam um, Christianity and traditional um, African religions and practices but I think that one thing that a lot of us are doing those of us who I think are a little younger um, is we're also realizing the negative impact that the black church has had on some of us and I think that I could have been looking at that from the lens of someone who is deconstructing a little bit. Um, and so I could have been a little bit more of a harsh critic than what was necessary because I think that the writer um, is still very religious and I am not. Um, I'm not going to get into all of that because that's not what this is about. But... I think that because of some lasting legacies for me, um, especially when you get down to some of the fundamentalist aspects of um, the Pentecostal church that I grew up in when I was younger, you there's some things that I don't always see as, you know, 100% positive. And I'm not saying that because historically, I cannot discredit uh, the role that it has played in black history and how we have kind of carved out and shaped religion for ourselves. But I also don't want to be all willy nilly and not address the fact that there have been and still are some very harmful elements of the black church. Um, if you are practicing, it's not you know I don't mean to offend anyone that's just me personally that's my belief and so that I think because I'm working through some stuff I think that section of the book kind of took me out a little bit um and not saying that he wasn't correct in his analysis and I thought he made some very very interesting connections but I almost wish he would have gone a step further and addressed just kind of the modern legacy that it's left and that in some aspects it has been very harmful and it has caused some issues within the community itself so and i'm not saying every church i'm i'm very i'm making a very blanket statement here like 
let's not I don't want to people think oh I'm like I'm all not black I know that I'm just saying that there's two sides to to that and I think that just a touch more nuance was needed in that section but that's just my personal insight and preference to that because of my own experience so I'm hoping to make it on to the next chapter of that very very soon um some other things that I have been reading, I am also still working on some things that are work related project wise. So I started a new book called The Elephant in the Room by Holly Goldberg Sloan, who is also the author of Counting Sevens, which is a very well known book. Um, this is about a young Turkish girl and her family that are living in the States, but end up having some issues when her mother has to go back to Turkey because of the fact that someone reported that her immigration paperwork was not exactly accurate and so she's been without her mother for a very long time it's just her and her dad and she's kind of pulled back from everybody she's had a lot of friends she doesn't really have friends anymore and she ends up meeting this older gentleman when her dad goes to fix his truck and they end up building this connection and they find out that his wife who has passed actually used to be her second grade teacher and so he realizes that she's dealing with a lot of stuff and so he ends up conveniently running into an old circus guy who is selling a what is it a bear and an elephant and he randomly won the lottery and let me just stop right there because this book is is so convenient that it's unrealistic um and I don't often say that about middle grade but this one is paced in such a way that nothing really it's just everything is super convenient like oh I noticed that you're feeling kind of down about the fact that your mother's not around and I know you really love elephants oh my goodness I happened just to walk into a donut shop and a guy selling an elephant stuff like that so it's kind of like out there to be honest with you and I'm not a huge fan of the writing style um at all <laughs> like it is in third person and I don't mind third person if it's one character this is written in third person for every single character meaning that we get a third person narrative perspective from every single character as if we are reading solely about them as if we have multiple perspectives and all those perspectives are in third person we even have the perspective of the bear and the elephant like we're hearing their internal dialogue but that internal dialogue is in third person I it's weird I think because there's not like the author's not trusting the writer to be able to figure things out so instead of it allowing us to put the pieces of the puzzle together in terms of emotions we are inevitably being told everything that they're feeling and thinking and I don't like that. I like if there's one way to really piss me off as a reader it is to tell me everything that a character is feeling in the moment I don't I'm not a fan of that that that's not me as a reader uh, so let's see I'm 49% of the way through that I'm, I'm gonna chug through that y'all I'm just gonna finish out this weekend because I just I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it because I can't I just can't be so bothered to <laughs> Like I'm already halfway through and I, I could DNF but um, as part of the, the project that I'm working on I'm just going to go ahead and, and finish it out. I'm trying to think of anything else that I have been reading and starting. Um, I definitely have some picture books that I need to talk about but I probably will wait to talk about those until tomorrow because I'm getting tired. I am on sprints on Robin's channel right now. She's doing black wing sprints. I just did another roll. I don't know if I talked about it. I rolled a six. And the six is free space. And so I wanted to try Jessica Lewis's new book, which is called 
monstrous. That cover is gorgeous. I'm not sure what this is about. Um, it appears to be somewhat of like horror, paranormal. It, listen. Listen, I, I'm not sure. I, this is, it's a girl, Lativia, who ends up at her aunt's house. And she's there for six weeks. And then she's off to college. But, oh, it seemed to have some queer rap in it. I'm feeling that. And let's see, she said the residents are suspicious of her. And at times outright hostile. And it's proven when Lativia is dragged out of her house in the dead of night into the forbidden red wood and presented as a human sacrifice to an ancient monster. What the fuck? I did not know that but this was... Okay, I actually checked this out because I was looking for something that was a little darker for... And I don't know if this will work. But I was looking for something that was a little darker for my patron uh, book club. We do book club differently, so we don't pick one book. We pick a theme for the month. We vote on a theme and then everybody reads a different book. And I like doing it that way because one, I'm a mood reader and a lot of my patrons are mood readers, but also because of the fact that I think it's a great way to do what we as librarians call readers advisory. It's how we also get to like share different titles and everybody's tbr just ends up longer which i think is cool but i'm gonna go ahead and start this um i literally have nine minutes left i'm gonna go make a cup of coffee which i really shouldn't but i am going to because i just want some coffee and i'm gonna go ahead and start this all right i will check in later and it's going in the vlog Just kidding. It's when I say nice and new, it means I cleaned it. If I run the target for Vaseline, I'll be good. All right, y'all ready? You got the best to go. Ready? Huh? Are you ready? I got faith in this. Do you? I do. And they've been putting far too much liquid in this. What is that? I drink pickle juice. I do too when I get nauseated. Uh, it helps you all have, uh, yeah, in there, right? This is real good for diarrhea, folks. What? <laughs> Bree, please, because this is going in my video on Tuesday. Please stop. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's not good for one. I think it's really messed up that y'all don't want to talk about your body fluids, but that's on y'all. I'll let you know this is going in the bar, so. This is the peppermint. And then this is the pickle. How am I supposed to eat it? What kind of yeah, pickle? I feel like we should have tried to pickle. Ask that before I dip my hand in this jar. We should have asked before. Yeah. We should have asked. Basically, sweet salt. Oh, no, that's just the peppermint peanut butter. Did you put oh. it inside of the pickle? Well, we don't have that today. So, what I'll do is crunch up. I just crunch. Now, this is a dill pickle. Now put the pickle away. I don't. Okay. <laughs> she didn't like it. Tell us about it, Bree. I feel like you have a lot of patience. You dip chips in mango. I don't want to. This is, we should stay out of this one. Just, no. <laughs> this conversation is not for you, babe. It wasn't good. What it tastes like? What kind of pickle was that? It's a steel pickle. It tastes like. Sweet. 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 You're supposed to use a stick and like suck on it. I can't. I gotta end this. <laughs>
I can't, I can't, I can't. No more recording. in my hair so i just wanted to do a really really quick check-in um we are headed out for a mommy daughter day we haven't i mean we're together all the time but we haven't just gone out just to i don't know i don't know how to explain it like design like mommy daughter date we haven't had one of these in a while so i have a couple of things on the agenda for us to do um we're gonna well i can't really say because she's right there and one of them is a surprise for her. So we're gonna go out, but I did wanna say that I um, did end up continuing on with Jada's book. I think I'm about 40% of the way in. I'm hoping to finish it before the vlog goes up on Tuesday. I don't know if that will be the case, but that is the goal and the aim is to finish it before it goes up on Tuesday, just because I do want to read Britney's memoir, which comes out on Tuesday. <laughs> and so I'm hoping to be done with hers while I, you know, so I can progress on um, to another one. I will say that it is um, very interesting. Jada grew up very rough um, and it definitely translates to her personality. I think if people are looking for this book to be a tell all about her relationship with Will, I don't think right now where I'm at, I don't think that's what you're necessarily going to get. I think a lot of it is an attempt to kind of showcase like who she is at the person as a person and like how life has thrown its its hard things at her um, and how it's defined her as an individual. Okay, what are you doing? Oh, you're trying to get in. Okay. Um you are in. You probably can't see, but you are in. You're you're on that side. Can you see yourself? Yeah. Okay. Um, but it kind of is a way like where she is definitely um, showcasing like who she is and why she is the way that she is. And I don't know if a lot of people are going to respect that or like that. She is hard. Um, she's a hard person. She explains that when she steps into Hollywood, she's often criticized for being a hard person. Um, it, she's not soft the way I think people have this expectation for her to be. And I think sometimes a lot of her life experiences have dictated, you know, going from just what she dealt with. It, it's it's interesting. And um, I also think that people don't understand the relationship that she had with Tupac. Um, and, you know, she stays strictly plutonic. But I feel like a lot of people don't feel like uh, men and women can have platonic relationships and so I think a lot of people struggle with seeing um her talk about Tupac and, and reiterating that nothing ever really happened between the two of them um so yeah but that's that's pretty much it um we're gonna go ahead and head out and uh when I make some more progress with that I'm also still reading uh Monstrous by Jessica Lewis I think I'm gonna use that for um a book that has a secret and also the free pick because it does have a secret because that town has a secret so i may use it for both um and then really i think i almost will glowy kind of be done i think so i don't know we'll we'll sit down and we'll talk about it more but all right check in with y'all later
minute before this vlog is going to go up, I always do this. Um, I get like my last little bit of clips in before I upload the video on Tuesdays. So, good morning. Hello. I am on my way to my job. It's the beginning of the week. It's always, you know, the beginning of the week is always tragic. <laughs> so... <laughs> And I feel like I have a lot going on this week. I don't know. I, I could not have a lot going on this week and it just feels like it. But we'll see because I haven't even taken a look at my calendar to know whether I really genuinely have a lot going on. Um, let's see, goals starting into this week and the last week of Black Halloween is I really do want to go ahead and tie up the loose ends for my um, TBR that I'm rolling, which, you know, this is really, this really has challenged me, I must say, like, this has challenged me because of the, the this the simple fact that I uh, typically am just, I mood read, and um, that is not really what's been happening this month, both on this channel and with my comic channel, because I've been trying to battle through finishing my TBR for that channel too so it, it's it's been just an interesting kind of situation going on which is it's not bad for me to kind of for once in my life to stick to actually finishing a TBR with that being said I do have um I think technically it would be one more prompt after I finish the book this week it would be one more prompt that I need to get to which is um a book that takes place during summer or spring and so that's that's what we are, are kind of looking at here um, I may see there's a couple of things that can happen here I still want to make sure I finish the dark 30 probably within the next couple days I have patron sprints tonight so that may be like my priority for patron sprints tonight I may just go ahead and prioritize finishing that because that could be I could use that one as the the free space and use um, Monstrous as the book that takes place um, during summer and spring and the book that has a secret. So basically, honestly, when it all boils down to it, I, I really need to finish those two books. If I finish those two books, I think I'll be good, but those two books are not gonna be finished by the time that this vlog ends. Um, I'm not listening or reading anything this morning. Um, in the mornings now, uh, because of everything that's happening. Oh, I love this light, honey. With the sun behind me, yes! Yes, yes, yes. Um, good lighting. Why can't I have this lighting all the time? Uh, ah! Um, all right, I'm done. I'm just being extra. Um, I listen to uh, uh, about five or six different podcasts every morning to keep up to date with what's happening um, in Gaza. Um, I listen to some things that are definitely skewed um, to one perspective, the other perspective, um, just because I just like to be actively aware. Um, and it's very interesting how some people just refuse to acknowledge that there is a genocide happening right now. It, it just, and on top of that, a lot, you know, everything that I'm listening to is Western media. Uh, that within itself is, is, you know, I'm causing myself issue by that because Western media is always going to give things from a Western perspective and a perspective that fits their interests and needs. And so I just try to listen to variety to get as in-depth or as widespread of a perspective as possible or widespread uh, information as possible. I don't want to say perspective. I should say information as possible because there's one particular podcast that tells me absolutely nothing about what's happening in Gaza. Like nothing. Nothing. But it's supposedly reporting on it and it's not. It doesn't tell you anything. Um, it's very so much... Um, feels as though it doesn't have to acknowledge what's happening in Gaza. So there is that. I um, think I have a couple of more that I need to listen to. I start listening to them really honestly as soon as I get up in the morning. Some of the episodes are like 
short and some of the episodes are extremely long so I um, still have a couple of things to work through. I think after that I actually listened to more of Jada's book last night. I made it to about 65% of the way through. I really do not have that much longer so I probably will just go ahead and knock Jada's book out today because I just don't have it. I don't want to carry it into this upcoming vlog like I said. Uh, it's just because I can finish it today. So I probably will go through depending upon meetings and stuff that I may have today. Once again, I have to look at my calendar. I will just go ahead and knock it out and see where we go from there. Um, all right, y'all. I will do another check-in at some point later. Probably a final, final check-in um, later on this evening before I go ahead and start uh, rendering this vlog. Thank goodness I went ahead and edited most of... I edited everything up till today. So we should be okay. Fingers crossed. It still probably will not get uploaded till 8 o'clock tomorrow because it's just, it's slow, slow moving. That's all. All right. Hello, 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 friends. Um, we are at the final clip of this vlog, which is already in, it should be like an hour long. <laughs> I don't know why these vlogs have been so long. I think I've just been super talkative. Um, so... I did end up um, finishing Jada's book. I think that's the only thing that I really ended up finishing today. I do have patron sprints tonight and I plan on working through some more of my Black Wing stuff, but that will be in the next week vlog. <laughs> Not this week, it'll be in next week's vlog. So yeah, yeah. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts and I did actually end up doing a written review on Goodreads because I felt like I needed to kind of get the words out of my system in order to really discuss um, what I think Jada was trying to do. I, I've seen a lot of criticism of this book. I've seen a lot of reviews of this book that are extremely interesting that do not really give Jada any space to discuss or tell her story. I think that how you perceive this book is is, is bef prior to going in is what you're going to get out. Like if you're going in with an open mind and you want to hear Jada's side of things, you want to hear Jada's life experience and who she is as a person, you're going to gain something out of it. I think if you go in looking for a tell-all about her and Will's relationship and, and drama, and that's not what you're going to get. This is, that's not what this is. It, and it's not about that. This is Jada telling her story from her perspective and l allowing people to see her as a person and understand who she is and why she is the way she is. Jada did not have an easy life. And so this side of her that comes off as very guarded, um, not very friendly, or not very approachable, I understand. It's very much so warranted. And a lot of people don't like that because I think in Hollywood, there's this perception that you must be charismatic. And Jada is just, that's not her. She's not a charismatic person. She's not, in, in the sense that she's not charismatic like Will. I think people look at Will and they expect Jada to be Will, but Jada's her own person. And people only view Jada in context of Will. And she's her own person. And so she, I don't think, ever had the Hollywood personality. I just don't think that that was ever her. And so there is this perception of her and who she is. And I don't think that that's reality. Now, keep in mind, I don't keep up with them via the internet. I don't keep up with any celebrity like that, to be honest with you. I'm always late to the party on celebrity news and what celebrities have going on in their life. I just am not, I have enough drama. <laughs> my own life. Uh, I, I, my life is so chaotic that it usually when books like this come out, um, this is, I'm, this is my first time experiencing a lot of stuff. Like when I read Will's book, it was my first time experiencing a lot of things. There were 
some things that I think maybe she shared during the Red Table Talks that I had no because I don't watch them so I don't watch TV or you know I I, I read a lot so if you want me to know what's going on with people it has to be in a book or a news article of the sort because that's the only way that I'm really going to process or consume the information. So a lot of the information was um, quite frankly it was new to me as as a reader and for some people if you've watched Red Table Talks maybe some of the information won't be new to you and you don't feel like you're gonna learn anything new but for those of us who I think are not as invested in anything that they have had going on you're gonna learn a lot. I think that there were some moments where with this one particular moment in which kind of made me a little angry at well I'm not going to talk about it because there are people who still want to read it and I don't want to spoil it for you uh, but I was shocked and disappointed quite frankly and and I was I was floored <laughs> I'm just gonna put it that way I was I was kind of floored but I I didn't rate it um I'm gonna leave it unrated I it, even if I wanted to rate it y'all I don't know what I would give it because um I enjoyed um I enjoyed her ethereal tone if that makes sense um I enjoyed um hearing her story and her perspective of things but they were still you know in terms of stylistically some things that I wasn't a fan of she does this kind of like self-help reflection workbook t style thing at the end of the chapters and I'm like I <laughs> I know you're trying to share advice I get it but I just felt like it kind of took me out of the of the story quite a bit um for some moments I was like uh not for me necessarily but maybe somebody would would benefit from that but I think that hearing her tell her story is it was worth it and I I feel some type of way about the people who continue to kind of attempt to silence her um and prevent her from telling her story well will already told his story well this isn't not about just a relationship this is about her life and she has the right to want to tell her story without will being the center of it that's the most unfortunate thing is that i think that people feel like she should be centering will and it's not about will yes he's talked about obviously because he's a huge part of her life and their relationship is extremely messy and chaotic but at the end of the day it is their love story this is how they choose to live their life and whether it fits into the traditional parameters that we set um you know in regard to a union between two people that's not our business and people are like well they make it our business when they put it out there i mean yes and no at the same time like they share it i think partly and this is my opinion people are going to disagree i think they share it partly um to uh, I think help people feel seen but when you put that much information out there for people I think it opens up a can of worms for people to feel like they can criticize anything and everything about you which I personally could never handle but I, I think for some of the things that they put out in the public Jada has wanted people to feel like they're not the only ones dealing with such things and she admits adamantly that their relationship is flawed and the system that they have worked out is is imperfect and very flawed and has caused a lot of issues but their relationship dynamic is their relationship dynamic in the sense that these two are life partners they are i don't know if i would say soulmates because that's not my call to make I, I know that Pac was definitely her soulmate but I think that they have had so much of their lives entangled together and take their commitment their union more seriously than what people realize which is why they don't want to get a divorce and it is not always healthy um, but it is their love story mess and all okay mess in all it is their love story so um i'm i'm gonna you know partially kind of leave it there uh 
as one of my final things oh I did end up reading uh two picture books I apologize there's two picture books I read that I hadn't talked about um A Walk in the Woods by Hudson Talbot which I ended up giving four stars to this is a, a picture book about dyslexia uh it's based on the author's own experience dealing with dyslexia and being a reluctant reader and how that impacted them uh in their childhood and realizing that when they took it step by step and and relied on what they knew when it came to words it was better than trying to keep up with everyone else and times have changed about how we approach kids that have dyslexia or are reluctant readers i think the tools and the language around it has gotten a lot better but i did enjoy that when i gave that one four stars and then i read there was a party for langston which is jason reynolds picture book debut and of course he's a brilliant human <laughs> absolutely brilliant human and so he's going to do brilliant things and so I ended up giving that one five stars. It's based off of a photograph uh, that he came across of two of his favorite poets uh, dancing at a library in celebration of Langston Hughes. So it is a love letter to Langston Hughes but also a, a love letter to uh, other writers that he's absolutely loved and it's a love letter to words. And what I loved about this is that because the picture was based on movement, when you read it, it, the actual text feels as though it's moving. It's drawn so that there is a movement to the text and Jason Reynolds writes as though there is a certain rhythm or cadence to, to the text. And so you get inspired to want to move as you're reading the book. It's absolutely brilliant and genius. I expect nothing less. I mean, he is the epitome of um, one of the best children's authors of our time. He will go down in, in librarianship and, and education as one of the best of all times to do it. So I'm not surprised that his debut picture book is a hit. I mean, come on. Like, are we surprised? No. So what I'm hoping for next week... Or this upcoming week actually starting this week is that I will go ahead and finish up uh, my Black Halloween vlog like I said I have patron sprints tonight so I'm hoping that I can go ahead and knock out um, at least a uh, dark 30 that's one that I'm, I'm really interested in just kind of working my way through because it's not long and hopefully that'll be one and then monstrous is the last one I think that I will finish and then I will be finished with uh, Black Halloween so yes um, that is it y'all. If you like this video, um, give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Let me know how you're doing with Black Halloween. Let me know what you've read this week. Uh, if you're looking for ways to follow me on social media or if you're looking for ways to support the channel, all those links will be in the description box below. And I will be back. My computer. Oh, goodness gracious. I'll be back with another video soon. I'm on my own, broken alone. I feel the rain crashing down. All